your tweets uh, encouraging uh, liberation. This? Jay Inslee uh, said your tweets encouraging liberation in Michigan, uh, Minnesota, Virginia were fomenting rebellion. Wondering uh, how that squares with um, the, the sober and methodical guidance that you issued yesterday. Well, I think we do have a sobering guidance, but I think some things are too tough. And if you look at some of the states you just mentioned, it, it's too tough, not only relative to this, but what they've done in Virginia with respect to the Second Amendment is just a horrible thing. They did a horrible thing, the governor. And he's a governor under a cloud to start off with. So when you see what he said about the Second Amendment, when you see what other states have done, no, I think uh, I feel very comfortable. Go ahead. Thank you, Mr. President. Just to be clear, when you talk about these states, um, Michigan, Minnesota, Virginia, do you think that they should lift their stay-at-home orders, or can you talk no, but I think elements of what they've done are too much. I mean, it's just too much. Uh, you know the elements because I've already said, but certainly a Second Amendment and Second Amendment having to do with uh, the state of Virginia, what they've done in Virginia is just incredible. Okay, please. Sir, are you concerned, though, that people coming out in protest are going to spread uh, COVID to other people? They're congregating in ways that health experts have said they should not. No, these are people expressing their views. I, I see where they are and I see the way they're working. They seem to be very responsible people to me, uh, but it's, uh, you know, they've been treated a little bit rough. Some of these areas that uh, you'd like to open up, some of these quadrants, you singled out Virginia, Michigan, they don't have a decline in cases yet. Yet you tweeted out today that you'd like to liberate them. Well, they're going to have soon, but they're very, 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 what they've done is very powerful in terms of, I, I think, you know, you could get the same result out of doing a little bit less. What they've done to some people is very unfair. In Virginia, I'm going above and beyond what we're talking about with this horrible plague. They want to take their guns away, okay? They want to take their guns away. That's the Second Amendment. That's Virginia. You have a gov governor who really I guess he should be under siege. He seems not to be. If he were a Republican, he'd be under siege. But he seems to have escaped something that was pretty bad, including what he said about birth, including what he said about many different things. But he wants to take, if you take a look at what's going on in Virginia, they want to take away Second Amendment rights, and that's what they want to do. So when you talk about liberate, or if you talk about liberation, you could certainly look at Virginia as one. Go ahead, anybody else? You would think that if the President of the United States wrote three separate tweets encouraging his supporters to partake in uprisings in states with Democratic governors, that he would be asked about it and actually have a better answer. And yet the best he could manage to come up with is some completely unrelated whining about the Second Amendment and that elements of their stay-at-home orders are, quote, too much, which is quite the convincing argument. Now, I'm not sure what Donald Trump doesn't understand here, but there is no too much when it comes to shielding yourself amid a global pandemic. Everyone who doesn't have to be out should not be out, period. This isn't difficult, and yet it is that very tendency to qualify the rules that has prevented this country from overcoming the virus. Had Trump had some actual leadership ability and actually called for a decisive national stay-at-home order months ago, this would be over. We'd probably be back at work. But this entire process has been marred by Trump and, of course, his Republican lackeys who blindly follow suit, who have pushed back against the recommendations by doctors and experts since the beginning. I mean, there are seven states, all with Republican governors, of course, who failed to even issue a stay-at-home order. And to the surprise of exactly no one, the number of new cases are peaking as late as today in half of those states, including in Nebraska, in North Dakota, and in South Dakota. In fact, South Dakota is now experiencing one of the highest rates of new coronavirus cases in the entire nation. In just the last week, the state saw the number of confirmed cases rise from 288 to 730, a 154% increase over the week. Which is not great considering the states that did take action are finally seeing their cases go down. But hey, at least those red states didn't surrender their freedom with some radical Democrat stay-at-home order.
Meanwhile, Virginia was the only state that Trump could even manage to give some excuse for, which wasn't even related to the pandemic. Trump had bizarrely decided that he'd tweet, liberate Virginia, alongside tweets to liberate Minnesota and Michigan, even though Minnesota and Michigan were about stay-at-home orders and Virginia was arbitrarily about gun legislation. Now, what he's referring to is a spate of new gun safety measures passed in Virginia, which includes requiring background checks on all gun sales, instituting a limit on handgun sales to once a month, increasing penalties for leaving firearms near children, and creating red flag laws. That is what Trump is having a temper tantrum over. Common sense regulations that the vast majority of Americans favor. Remember too that Virginia's entire legislature flipped blue amid promises that they would enact gun safety reforms. That's not cause for an uprising, that is literally how democracy works. Although I guess that's why Trump hates it so much. By the way, I just need to point out one line in Trump's rambling in particular. These are people expressing their views. I, I see where they are and I see the way they're working. They seem to be very responsible people to me. They seem to be very responsible people, Trump says, of the protesters congregating together in the midst of a highly contagious global pandemic. Got it. But Trump's inane statements aside, the fact is that these protesters taking to the streets are prolonging the very measures that they are protesting. The whole point of staying at home is to contain the spread so that we can reopen the country. We're not doing this for fun, clearly everyone wants to get back to work, but we're trying to make sure that when we do go back to work and reopen the country, that we don't see a second wave of the virus that kills off thousands more Americans. But when idiots take to the streets like this, they're increasing the likelihood that the virus spreads, which means more time at home. So I don't know who these people think they are, but this isn't the Boston Tea Party and they're not patriots for protesting outside. We are in the middle of a global pandemic and the solution isn't just willing the virus into submission with American exceptionalism, the solution is staying inside. But Trump isn't concerned with safety as much as he is trying to provoke an uprising against Democratic governors because putting people's lives at risk is worth the political fight for him. That's when he thrives, when he's attacking his opponents. And so even though this whole notion of fomenting civilian uprisings against their governments will put people in immediate danger, Trump prefers that because it helps him politically. And as we've learned since day one, that is all that this president is concerned with.